Welcome to week seven two of this English 101 class. Today we're going to discuss the role of research. So without further ado, I will now share my screen. Writing from research. So what is the role of research? Why do we do research? When you perform research, you are essentially trying to solve a mystery. You want to know how something works or why something happened. In other words, you want to answer a question that you and other people have about the world. Presenting what you have learned from research can be just as important as performing the research. Research results can be presented in a variety of ways, but one of the most popular and effective ways to present research is the research paper. A research paper presents an original thesis or purpose statement about a topic and develops that thesis with information gathered from a variety of sources. Writing a research paper is an ideal way to organize thoughts, craft narratives, or make arguments based on research and share your newfound knowledge with the world. Like when I do research, I always ask myself a research question. What am I, what am I curious about? What do I want to know? What do I want to learn? And that enhances my curiosity. And then I would do research. And then the answer to my research question usually comes about from my research. And so I'll stop for a moment here. And so what I did was I asked myself the following research question. I said that, um, is, does science fiction, because I love to read science fiction, does science fiction exist in other countries besides the United States? Is there science fiction outside of Star Trek, which is all I knew at the time. When I first started the project, all I knew was Star Trek. And so that was my intriguing research question. You always start with an intriguing research question. What, it, what is it that you want to know? So I, it's like a quest or an adventure when you think about it. So I started researching and I ended up reading books from around the world, anthologies about science fiction from around the world. And as I started reading and doing my research, I found out that, that science fiction, so that the answer to your research question becomes your thesis statement. So the answer to my research question, is there science fiction around the world? And then to my delight, I found out there is science fiction around the world. China, uh, Vietnam, uh, Europe, Africa, Latin America, Russia, Every corner of the world has its own science fiction based on its um, you know, history, based on that country's history, culture, um, and expectations. And so what was fascinating about studying all of this was, for instance, in China, three-body problem is its most popular science fiction um, you know, novel. And it's now a Netflix movie. And so it, it has, um, and, and then you have um, Russian, you know, science fiction. And so when you do research, it's like an adventure and you're, you're on a quest for knowledge. You're thirst. You, you have a curiosity about the world. And so for me, that's the purpose of research is to satisfy your curiosity or your thirst for knowledge. So let's get back to the, um, to the notes about, and then, and then the way to share that knowledge is through your research paper or through a video like this. So let's go back to the um, sharing. So those are the, some of the re reasons for research. So no matter what field or study you are interested in, you will most likely be asked to write a research paper during your, your academic career. The research process allows you to gain expertise on a topic of your choice, and the writing process helps you remember what you have learned and understand it on a deeper level. Knowing how to write a good research paper is a valuable skill that will serve you well throughout your career. Whether you are developing a new product, uh, studying the best way to perform a procedure, or learning about challenges and opportunities in your field of employment, you will use research techniques to guide your exploration. You may even need to write a written report of your findings. And because of effective communication, uh, and because effective communication is essential, employers seek to hire people who can write clearly and effectively. The steps of your research. 
Research process. Choose a topic, plan and schedule time to research and write, conduct research, organize research and ideas, draft your paper, revise and edit your paper. To narrow the focus of your topic, you may try pre free writing exercises such as brainstorming. You may also need to ask a specific research question and then have a working thesis. You may use your research question and your research, uh, you may use your, your research question and your working thesis to create a research proposal. In a research proposal, you present your main research question, any related sub-questions as you plan to explore and your working thesis. Planning and scheduling. Before you start uh, researching, take time to plan your research. Research, research projects can take weeks or even months to complete, so you need to have a good schedule. Conducting research. You're going to need both primary sources and secondary sources. Primary sources are fir is the first-hand information of eyewitnesses, and so primary sources provide first-hand information via surveys, in-person in -person interviews, and historical documents are primary sources. Secondary sources, such as biographies, literary reviews, include some analysis or interpretation. Take careful notes. Organize your paper and the evidence that you have collected. Draft your rough draft and combine your research findings with your critical analysis. You will incorporate your source materials into your paper using APA or MLA and discuss each Thought, each sorts thoughtfully in relation to your thesis. And after you write your rough draft, you will revise and edit your paper for essay structure, unity, cohesion, grammar mistakes, and, uh, and punctuation. Key takeaways. People undertake research projects throughout their academic and professional careers in order to satisfy their curiosity in order to answer specific questions, share their findings with others, increase their understanding of challenging topics, strengthen their research, writing, and analytical skills. The research writing process comprises of six steps, choosing a topic, scheduling and planning, conducting research, organizing research, and drafting a paper and revising and editing the paper. And then, Steps in developing a research proposal. Write a good writing a good research paper takes time and effort. Your first step is to choose a topic, develop research questions, a working thesis, and then your proposal. Understand the importance of choosing a topic that fulfills the assignment requirements. And you could, if you get stuck on what to write about, you could go to ChatGPT to brainstorm ideas, and you can go to ChatGPT to identify potential topics for your uh, paper. And so it is important to know how to narrow down your ideas into a concise, manageable thesis. You may also use the list as a starting point to help you identify additional related topics. Discussing your topics with your, discussing your ideas with your instructor is also a good idea if you want more ideas. And if you have trouble narrowing your topic, you can also discuss this with your instructor. Once you have a list of potential topics, you will need to narrow your topic. So you could use a whole bunch of brainstorming, idea mapping, outlining to narrow your focus. And you review your list, you identify two or three topics, and then after you've identified your topic, you've narrowed your topic, you've written your outline, you conduct preliminary research. And so you, uh, uh, the exploratory reading, like free writing, can help you identify interesting angles. Surfing the web uh, and browsing through newspaper and magazine articles are good ways to start. Talk about your ideas with your friends, your instructor, and brainstorm and free write. And, and then your preliminary thesis or your working thesis will be the answer to your research question. And as you do re the research, your thesis will change 
and you would get to tweak your thesis to, to, to have your thesis match your research. And so in formulating the, so it's very important to have a good research question. And so my research question was, does uh, science fiction uh, occur in other countries? So a strong research question requires you not only to find information, but also to put together different pieces of information, interpret and analyze them, and figure out what you think as you consider potential. So the very first thing you do is you have to ask yourself, what am I curious about? And then you skim and read to see what the research has to say about your research topic. And I actually, I use ChatGPT a lot in order to brainstorm for my thesis. So then you have your working thesis, and that is a temporary thesis that you work on, and it's subject to change. As you learn more about your topic, you may change your thinking in light of your research findings. Key takeaways, developing a research proposal involves identifying potential ideas, choosing ideas to explore further, uh, cho choosing and narrowing a topic, formulating a research question, and developing a working thesis. A good topic interests the writer and fulfills the requirement of the assignment. Defining and narrowing a topic helps writers conduct focused, in-depth research. Writers conduct preliminary research to identify possible topics and research questions. A good research question interests readers, and it's neither too broad or too narrow, and has no obvious answers. A good working thesis expresses a debatable idea or claim that can be supported with evidence from research. And so writers create a research proposal to present their topic, main research question, and sub-questions. So a good research proposal is similar to a good outline, and it is equivalent to the pre-writing stage of your writing process. So the very first thing you do in, in, in pre-writing is you choose a topic, you conduct research, you organize research, you revise and edit your paper. And so as you work on your working, as you work on your paper, you have the research phase of your project in which you conduct research and organize research, and you have the writing phase of your project, which is to draft your paper and revise and edit your paper, which is just the same thing as your writing, the writing process. And you need to make time, have good time management skills when you do your paper. You have to set up project schedule. Okay, and always stay organized, set up a schedule that's easy to follow. Either you do your homework in the morning when, before everyone gets up or after everyone goes to bed. So you need to organize your time and resources uh, systematically and review your schedule frequently and check your progress. And use note cards to take notes of your, on index cards. I used to do it on index cards before, before they had uh, internet. So managing your project effectively means anticipating potential problems, taking time to minimize these problems, and, and prioritizing your schoolwork over going to party with a friend. Okay, so you need to prioritize what you're going to do. So to complete a research project, a writer must carefully manage each phase of the process and break uh, major steps into smaller tasks. Writers can plan a research project by setting up a schedule Writers stay focused by being organized and anticipating for any setbacks. And so then you have the research phase, which is the first part of your research project in which the writer gathers and organizes research. The writing phase is when you actually write the paper, revise it, and edit the paper. And then your project schedule is your time management skills so that you actually make the time for your um, research. So now that you have planned your research uh, project, you are going to begin your research. You need to know how to evaluate your sources critically so that you can be a media savvy researcher. Your objective for this section is to locate and evaluate sources. So how do you find and evaluate sources? So when you choose a paper topic and you've got your research question, then in order to identify potential sources, 
You can use primary sources, which is first-hand sources such as research articles, uh, literary, literary text, historical documents, autobiographies, or, so that, that's first-hand knowledge, or you can use secondary sources such as magazine articles, biograph, bi biographical books, literary and scientific reviews, television uh, documentaries. Ask yourself which sources are most likely to provide the information that will answer my research questions. Make sure that what you research relates back to your thesis. And don't use ChatGPT for your research sources because ChatGPT you know, hallucinates. So you still have to do your research the old fashioned way by going to your online library and also going to Google Scholar. Peer reviewed sources are the most, um, you know, they are the most uh, reliable source. So you can use reference works like almanacs, encyclopedias, atlases, abstracts. You can use nonfiction books like trade books, biographies. You can use periodicals like newspapers, magazines, academic journals. You can use government publications, federal, state, and local government agencies. Include court doc documents, public records, statistics, studies, guides, business and nonprofit um, publications, which includes reports, newsletters, manuals, brochures, and other print documents. And then you could also go to the library and find sources in the library databases. And so you should go to your, uh, and so when you go to the library, you're going to find all the databases. And a database is just an archive of a lot of things, a lot of sources, all put together in one place. So to locate, um, you know, a lots of magazine and journal articles, you could go to a periodical index or an online periodical database, which will then index all the different, you know, articles for you to look at. And so these tools index uh, library catalogs, index the articles that appear in newspapers, magazines, and journals. And print indexes may be available in the periodical sections of your library, but more and more databases all have online database indexes that you can access through your online library. Okay, and so New York Times has is is a considered a, a good print has a print index, ProQuest, SiteLit, Business Source Complete, Medline, and Besco Host all have online. Uh, catalogs and indexes that you can look for. So when you go to your online library and you put in your topic, that's an that is an online index catalog. That's the that's that search box in your library. And so when you do your uh, research, you're going to have both popular and scholarly periodicals. And so when you search for, be sure to distinguish among different types of periodicals, mass market publications such as newspapers and popular magazines. That's known as popular sources, differ from scholarly sources in their accessibility, audience, and purpose. If you go to Google Scholar, you're going to find scholarly periodicals. Newspapers and magazines are written for a broader audience than scholarly journals. Their content is usually quite accessible and easy to read. Trade magazines that target readers within a particular industry may presume the reader has background knowledge, but these publications are still reader friendly. Scholarly or academic journals are written for a much smaller and expert audience. So that's what you would find in Google Scholar, and it's much harder to read. And if you get lost and you don't know wh where anything is, um, you can always go to the reference librarian to ask questions. And I've used the, 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 the um, librarian a lot. And so you, you could find, um, with the expansion of technology and media, a wealth of information is available in electronic format, such as online databases, popular websites, um, newspapers, ebooks, audiobooks, in industry blogs, uh, popular web search engines like Google Scholar. Online discussion, online discussion pages. Libraries can also have CD-ROMs and audiobooks if you go to a physical library. 
audio and video recordings, although some on online libraries also have uh, audio books. So when faced with the challenge of writing a research paper, some students rely on popular search engines. But you know, if you use Google, you're going to get all the hits. You might even get some ads. So it's better to use Google Scholar, OK? And also uh, limit your, limit your results to .edu, .org, and .gov. So anything that ends in those website names are reliable sources. Peer-reviewed sources are also uh, reliable sources. And um, you could, so that's how you evaluate uh, evaluable, you know, valuable sources. Now if you want to skim, once you get the article, you find the article you want to read, then you skim it. You skim it by only reading the introduction and the conclusion and then you read the first and last uh, paragraphs of each body of each body paragraph. Sorry, you read the first uh, sentence and the last sentence of each body paragraph because the first sentence is your topic sentence and the last sentence is your concluding sentence. So that's how you skim the introduction and conclusion. You skim through the subheadings and text features such as sidebars. You look for keywords related to your topic. And journal articles often begin with an abstract or summary of the contents. So you read the abstracts to determine the article's relevance to your research. And so all information sources are not created equal. Some can vary, uh, you know, so you've got to avoid things like advertisements because the advertisers have a hidden agenda. They want you to buy their product. And so advertisers will exaggerate or even lie just to get you to buy their product. So therefore, advertisements are not a reliable source for your paper. You always want to find um, credible sources in order to find credible, you know, in order for your source to be credible. I teach students Kapow. C stands for current within 10 years. A means the author is an expert. P means that the purpose, it's not an advertisement, no hidden agenda, no, um, and then O stands for no bias, objectivity. W stands for the writing style is professional. So that's Kapow. And so here you would, here it's about the same thing as Kapow. You consider the type of source, its intended purpose and audience, the author, the expert, any hidden indications of a hidden agenda, how current the source is, the overall quality of the writing, thinking, and design. So that's the same thing as, as Kapow. And then you evaluate the different types of sources. Is it a popular source? Is it a, is it a scholarly source? Is it the National Enquirer? Obviously, we don't use the National Enquirer, ChatGPT, or Wikipedia for our sources. And so those are known as low quality. So you've got all kinds of, th those are questionable sources, okay? ChatGPT, Wikipedia, um, blogs, um, those are all questionable sources. If you have newspapers, repu reputable newspapers and magazines, those are what I call so-so or varied quality sources. And then you've got your high quality sources like Google Scholar, your library databases, and peer-reviewed articles. And government documents, documents posted online by reputable uh, organizations such as universities and research institutes. So yes, you have high quality, medium quality, and low quality sources. So you want to avoid the low quality sources for your paper. And that's how, and you've got to make sure you follow Kapow. C-A-P-O-W. Currency, author, purpose, objectivity, and uh, writing style. And that covers all of this, okay? You've got to make sure that your source is reputable and reliable. You've got to make sure it's an established, well-known newspaper. Make sure there's no bias, favoritism, or, or prejudice toward a particular person or group that the author doesn't just cherry pick their facts. For instance, most news, news stations on TV are all biased. If you go and watch Fox News or Newsmax, then it's very con then everybody is for Trump and against Biden, and so that's a bias. And then if you watch something like CNN News or NBC, CBS, any of the news, other news stations, they're all for Biden, so that they all have 
bias. You want to avoid bias. So if you want to find a news source that's non-biased, and you want to find a credible source that's non-biased, you can go to allsides.com. That is non-biased. That is a good non-biased news source, okay? So you got to make sure no hidden agendas, no bias, no media bias, and use current sources and evaluate the overall quality of the sources by asking yourself the Kapow questions. Currency, uh, author, um, purpose, objectivity, and writing. And then you can ask yourself all of these questions. And so you keep track of your course, you keep track of your sources by taking notes. Every time you take down some kind of in-text citation, you write down the in-text citation and the reference citation, so, and then you keep track of it in your notes, okay? You can either keep track of it, you can have a note-taking, you could do it on your computer, you could have it in your notebook. However way you do it, you have to take, take good notes so that you can keep track of all of your different, um, you know, all of your different, and you need to know how to use APA or MLA to avoid, um, to avoid plagiarism so that you give credit to the researcher. If you write the facts, but you forget to put where you got it from, that is plagiarism. That means that you're stealing other people's information that they could have spent years trying to research or doing for their PhD. That's expensive to go for a PhD. And so when you write your reference citation, you have to have your author, the author's name, okay, last name, first name, then you have um, the date, article name, publisher name, uh, website name, um, or journal name, then you have a date you retrieved the website and web address. So that is the reference citation that goes at the end after the last page of your paper. And so every reference citation needs to have a matching in-text citation. Your in-text citation just has your author name. If it's a direct quote, it just has quotation marks, uh, author name, date, page number. If it's a paraphrase quote, you don't need, uh, and that means that you summarized it, paraphrased it. That means that you just have the author name and date. And then the in-text citation goes inside the body of your paper, while the reference citation goes after the last page of your paper. And so, and, and it's known as references. So those of you who, who already learned um, MLA, you don't say works cited. You, if you're learning rep, uh, APA for the first time, it's called references, okay? So you gotta take no, efficient notes and use headings to organize your ideas. You know when to summarize, when to quote directly. You always quote directly if you're using any kind of numbers, historical facts, medical facts, scientific facts, uh, technical facts, and uncommon knowledge. So that's when you have to quote directly so that you give credit to the researcher. And then even if you paraphrase or summarize the source in your own words, you still have to cite where you got it from. And so a direct quote means that you use the exact wording, any kind, anything with numbers, direct quote. Everything else you can, you can paraphrase, okay? And so you gotta take accurate notes, okay? And use a system that works for you maintain a research notebook or index cards. You can annotate your source. You can print it out. You can photo sh photocopy it. Any kind of method, as long as you know what system you use. So key takeaways. A writer's use of primary and secondary sources is determined by the topic and purpose of the research. Sources used may include print sources, such as books and journals, electronic sources, strategies that help uh, you uh, locate things, locate uh, sources efficiently, include uh, conducting effective keyword searches. You evaluate sources based on Kapow. You uh, take, and you take really good notes, okay? And then you need to know all of these words. Obviously, if you see that all of these things are bolded, this means that this is gonna show up on your test for your midterm, for example. And so anytime you see bolded words in your textbook, you need to take good notes and learn it. And learn this textbook by Scott McLean. Yeah, learn this textbook's exact wording, okay? 
So periodical index, all of these words, you have to know what that means for your midterm exam, okay? And that pre should pretty much end it, okay? And I'm not gonna go over the rest of it. Uh, basically, use Kapow in order to evaluate your sources so that an effective research paper focuses on presenting the writer's ideas using information from research as support. Effective writers spend time reviewing, synthesizing, and organizing their research notes before they begin drafting a research paper. It is important for writers to revisit their research questions and working thesis. And whatever it is that you research, you got to make sure that your research matches your thesis statement, relates to your thesis. And, and it's so easy to get off track and get so involved in your research, you forget what you're... So always keep your research question and your thesis statement at the top of, at, to the top of your head, okay? And, um, and if you've already written out your outline, so in you, when you take notes and your, your index cards, you could say, okay, this, the, this research pertains to paragraph two. Okay, paragraph two would be one stack of, of index cards. Paragraph three, another stack of index cards. Paragraph four, another stack of index cards, that sort of thing. And so that you, that way, when you have, look at your source, you know which paragraph it goes to. That's how I used to do my research paper before they had internet. Yeah, that's, I'm, I'm a pre-internet a graduate student. So that's it for this week's, that's it for this week's lecture on how to evaluate sources. Use Kapow. C for currency, A for the author has to be an expert, P for purpose, that it's not a, an advertisement, doesn't have bias or hidden agenda. O is objectivity. Okay, that's the bias one. W means that the writing style is professional, no grammar errors, and you have clearly enunciated, the, web, the website clearly enunciates where they got their information from. So if you have any questions about how to do research, okay, feel free to email me and I will gladly help you on your research. Research doesn't have to be painful or tedious or boring if you're writing about something you care about. So in my case, it was science fiction. And yes, it was fun reading the science fiction from around the world and then learning to my surprise that each country has its own science fiction and it's so different and yet the same. So that was fun. So if you ever wanna ask me about that, I could tell you all the different kinds of, of science, science fiction that I found out about when I, I was teaching a literature class. That's why I had that research question. That's where it came from. In case you're wondering, why is she out of the blue going about the science fiction? You know, what is that about? Yeah, I was teaching a literature class, so I had to find out more, you know. So in my case, it was, you know, related to what I was doing for work. So that shows you that when you do research, your research can also be connected to your work. So that ends this week's um, spiel on the fun of doing research. So if you like this video, feel free to subscribe to the Professor H Writing Channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at any time. So I will end this recording. And I hope you all have a great seventh week.